Welcome to Minstrel's Heart Music. Today's episode is a very special episode because I have a very special person on this line. His name is Boris Amegbe and he's the best keyboardist in First Love, uh, in the group of First Love churches in the US. Um, so let's uh, welcome Oris to today's episode. Hi, Oris. Hey, what's up? What's up, Cap? How you doing, bro? Very good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. So, tell me about yourself, Oris. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yep. Like you heard from the man himself, my name is uh, Oris. Um, yeah, from First Love Boston. I've been playing keys for around eight almost nine years i believe now um i started around middle school um like seventh grade okay and then now i'm in uh senior year of college so it's been some wow. time yeah so when i started playing keys i was in church right uh, around mm-hmm. maybe what like 12 years old or 13 years old and what had happened was that um the church was going to start going to new jersey driving from Worcester, Massachusetts to New Jersey. And that was like five hours just to learn wow. keys on a Saturday. So, yeah, wow, right? So mm-hmm. I believe on that day, my mom wanted me to, she, she wanted to buy a keyboard for me. So she we went to some yard sale to buy some toy. <laughs> yeah, and then at, in the beginning, she asked me whether or not I wanted to learn. And I was just like, like, it's all, like I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like I'll do whatever, like I'll do whatever. Yeah. Um, and then very she was like, yeah, very indifferent, very, very, very indifferent. And then until she said that, um, you should try. And then I was like, trying is good be- for me <laughs> because if I try and I don't succeed, it's okay. I tried, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? If I try and I do well, it's great. We thank God. Yeah. Once I bought that keyboard, my mom bought it for me. We started going to New Jersey every, um, Saturday. And I only went for like two weeks, I believe. And then wow. that's when my parents were like, this thing is a waste of time because you're only going <laughs> for about, what, two hours. You're driving all the way there. We're paying $20 for you to get there or whatever, $30 for you to get there. Once you get there, it's only two hours. You drive back, you're tired. You got to go to church the next day. It's too much. So, but that's when our funds, Pastor Alphonse of the New Jersey branch, God bless him. He's the one that taught me how to play a scale. C wow. to C, do re mi fa so la ti do. Yeah. We're doing that soon, guys. We're doing that soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've already taught that. I've already, I've actually taught that. You taught it, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Do remember, guys? Do remember? (laughs) That's the, um, but yeah, no. Learning your skills is very important because it does build the right fingering. If one thing I'll say, quick, quickly, is that if you if you don't maintain a habit of learning on your like. Being on your toes when it comes to the scales. Mm. I'm sorry, your fingering at the end of the day is going to be just rubbish, going to be trash. So it's going to, and, and I'm not going to lie, even between keyboardists I hear today, you can, they have something called a voicing. Every keyboardist has their own voicing, their own little, it's almost mm. like slang for keyboard. Everyone has mm. their own accent, their own flavor. Mm. And if you don't have the right fingering, your voicing will be off. So please, learn your skills, please. Your skills Thank are you. very, very important. Very you, important. Especially if you want to sound clean. Mm. Very important, learn your skills. But sorry. Anyways, so after that, um, I started learning from home from um, uh, Dr. Naji Haj uh, from Kamasi who came to the US just for some time. He was spending some time with my family. And he started teaching me. He started teaching me keys. He started teaching my older brother how to play the bass. Um, so then I'd spend... That man, hey, he'd spend hours. I would spend what six hours, seven hours a day just doing me fasolati do, don't la so far me do, front Ouch. and back. You know what I mean? Hours, hours, hours. And then it's like once I do a right hand, right, I gotta go backwards, right, right hand as well. And then as, once I get right hand, I gotta go left hand, mm. then backwards, right. Is this and all the keys or all keys? Wow, all okay. keys. All keys Guys, and then in 12 keys. All keys, all keys. And then afterwards, um, yes, definitely <laughs> keys. You don't want to be stumped. <laughs> and then afterwards, um both hands all the way up, mm-hmm. all the way down, right? Yeah. And then afterwards, right hand, all the way, 
all the way up the keyboard now. So okay. say the keyboard is what 88 keys. Mm-hmm. All the way up 88 keys, all the way down wow. 88 keys, left hand all the way up. Then both hands all the way up, all the mm. way down. Just scales. Mm. Just scales. No playing chords. Everyone wants to play chords in the beginning. No chords, just wow. scales. You I see, think so. we're learning how important skills are, guys. Mm. Um yeah, so practice your skills. Yeah, and, practice. Yeah, anyway, yeah, continue. No, no, you, you go on. Oh, bro, it's all for you today. You got it? Yeah. I, I bet. But yeah, no, what he's saying is very important. Practice your skills. Important. But yes, so then after some time, we started learning Hillsong. Just, just Save Your King, mm-hmm. um, One Way Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you named them, but just Hillsong. Hillsong um, is... I believe, in my opinion about Hillsong is that if you're learning how to play keys, I believe that's one of the first things you should try and play, try and get your Hillsong and then move from there because Hillsong, the chords are very, very simple yet important. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I believe that in the beginning, especially when people hear gospel music, they're like, oh, wow, how did they play that? But some of the elements of gospel also come from the simple elements of that you learn from Hillsong, like the sus chords mm-hmm. or just regular weird voicings that you have mm-hmm. with keyboards. Instead of playing um, regular chords, maybe rootless chords, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's not, or you even learn your inversions. So it's not always the same thing that you're always going to be playing. Yeah. So I think Hillsong, great foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you were playing skills for a yeah, bit skills, and started learning Hillsong. And I started learning the Hillsongs, yes. Mm-hmm. And then that was awesome. Started learning a lot of songs. I would have to, but I didn't have a musical ear at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And for, for some of you that don't know what a musical ear is, a musical ear is just um, having the ability to hear mm-hmm. um just the, chords, uh, the progression melodies, chords, yeah. melodies, and yeah. there's there's levels, there's levels, there's levels. Mm-hmm. You can ask your boss on the other side. There's levels to it. He, he's 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 up there, but <laughs> even with that being said, yeah, this um I would have to use um, a website called Guitar Taps. Okay. And within that website, they would give us. I think it was only meant. To, it was only meant for guitars, but mm. of course, music is music all around. Yeah. So they would say A major, A minor, A minor. E flat, E flat. So you know what chords you're playing and what key you're trying to play in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Hillsong was a great beginning for me. And then after some time, I was in I was in a church called the Worcester Branch. And then my dad, um, sorry, Pastor Douglas started the uh, branch in Boston. So we moved to Boston after that. So now I'm still learning keys. But then I, that's when I met Anaya and Kama or Nana from Ghana. I just say Nana from Ghana. That's how I know him. I definitely owe him a lot. A lot of uh, gratitude, and yeah, I just want to thank him. God, I thank God for his life. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's the one that introduced me to gospel, gospel music. You get me? Okay. So the first time I heard him playing keys, I said, what, what style of music is this? You know, I ever heard something. Like, yeah, I was confused. Yeah, so, those musicians that make you turn your head. Yeah, it's like, hey! I was like, ah, you know? Yeah. And the funny thing is that even before then, before he, he was on the keys, I think I was playing. And then he was telling me, oh, you know, you're pretty good. Me, I I was playing small parts. <laughs> and it wasn't anything. And then I was like, oh, thank you. But he said, and then I was like, oh, do you play? He's like, oh, I play a little bit. That little bit is not any little bit. Don't, don't mind uh, these keyboardists, everybody. Yeah, You'll be there. You'll be there. Stuff. You'll all you all be there. Say amen, guys. Say amen. Man, man right? Mm-hmm. But yes, um, what happened was, yeah, so Nanao started teaching me gospel. Started teaching me many elements of gospel music. Uh, many of the the things that um, he helped me to pick up on were a lot of uh, different chord distinctions. If I say diminished chords, if I say augmented chords, we'll uh, get there, guys. Major, minor, we'll yeah, there. we'll be there, right? We'll be there. But anyways, yeah, he taught, started teaching me many different elements of gospel music. Told me to listen to this, to listen to this, listen to this. I believe the one of the biggest um, artists that he told me to listen to was Marvin Sapp. Mm-hmm. Because Marvin Sapp's keyboardist, he had a he had to go two main keyboardists for Marvin mm-hmm. Sapp was between Kevin Bond and Aaron Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll get to yeah. that more more in depth. But yeah, mm-hmm. um, I started learning under Nanayo, and I I'm blessed by the opportunity that he gave me. You know, I wasn't I wasn't good. 
Or mm-hmm. I mean, by the grace of God, I believe I'm, I'm okay now. But I wasn't very good at the time. But he still allowed me to play in church, and I just mm-hmm. want to say thank God because you know sometimes, yeah. Even when mm-hmm. when someone greater is there, it's hard for yeah. It's definitely yeah. hard for you yeah. to, you to know, get kind of to time. get exactly, yeah. exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why should I get playing time with this guy's all already here? But he gave me the time. He encouraged me. He also told me when even when I'd be like, ah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not trying to play. He'd be like, ah. But I like the way you play. Mm. Instantly, I'd be like, okay, I want to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I definitely thank God for the opportunity that he's given me. I think that's another thing as musicians. And I think even as a musician, you should know to to wait for an opportunity. Let an opportunity come to mm. you. You get, you get what I'm trying to say? Um, I believe in Ecclesiastes, it says that... Preach. Um, <laughs> I'm not preaching, but it's, um, it's, it talks about how the race is not to the swift and, and many mm-hmm. other things. But the last scripture says that time and chance belong to all. So that means that God gives everybody an equal opportunity. So you'll yeah. get an opportunity to play. Just be patient. Be patient. Wait. It's one of the fruits. But um, yeah, um, that definitely developed me to become a lot better through the experiences. Some Sundays I would come share the song that song it's, it's not good at yeah. all wrong yeah. key everything yeah. Yeah. but that's another thing even the Nile um taught me how to um practice first of all he, i believe he taught me how to practice because mm-hmm. even when practicing he would send me i think one time he had an internship and he was in spain and okay. i needed to learn how to play a song and i asked him to send me a video so he sent me a video this is old day he sent me a video through skype <laughs> all day so uh-huh. you don't know it's skype skype <laughs> and then in skype um i would have to like get in it and i think the mm-hmm. video was even reversed so i'd even put in a movie try okay. to reverse the video mirror it but wow once i got i got it and then i would spend hours trying to see what he's trying to play okay he's playing this he's playing this okay 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 I, so I we're going into oris's practice routine practice, right now yeah, this practice. is exciting <laughs> this is exciting okay. this is how i practice in the beginning how be in the beginning this is how i practice I said before, I practiced for at least six to seven hours a day, right? Mm-hmm. So within that six to seven hours, it just wasn't, it wasn't me sitting down for six hours. I'm not taking the MCAT, you know, it's like a long <laughs> exam. Yeah. But um, I'm going and coming back, th- 15 minutes going, coming back, 15 minutes mm-hmm. going, coming back. When you add up all those hours, it was up to like around six hours, seven okay. hours a day. Wow. Like he's, so it's not necessarily that you have to stay oh. there. So you are not sitting down no. just for six you do 15 yeah. minutes of going up a scale and going yeah. down then yeah. you do something else and you yeah. come back yeah yeah okay. yeah but for this time this was not going up scales this was within learning how to play from a video that was sent to me mm-hmm. so say i believe the song was my help right brooklyn Tab- mm-hmm. tabernacle choir yeah um but yeah um i had to learn um many of the chord progressions in the beginning mm-hmm. and yeah and i think even listening to to that practice what um nana sent me that video um that gave me a bit of more of an ear or an inclination mm-hmm. to get an ear mm-hmm. so i started to recognize okay that's what the four sounds like that's what the six sounds like that's what the two sounds like you get mm-hmm. me so yeah that was that was very great but no that's how i practice i get i would get a video be like all right i'm gonna practice for this amount of hours mm-hmm. because really learning something on keys is is muscle memory okay. muscle memory meaning that once like the brain is gelled up to so memorize a bit, bit of background uh Oris yeah. is also a medical student so that's why you'll be hearing things like muscle memory and and so on <laughs> and mcats and things like that yeah okay yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's done what you achieve it through repeated repetition. acts repetition yeah. yes so practicing and I, when when I say practice, I don't mean practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday. There's no practicing every day. Every That's day. why you can't like 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 they say, like you can't be lukewarm with the keys. You mm-hmm. gotta be hot or cold too. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's not anything. You can't mm-hmm. be in the middle. Mm-hmm. No, so I uh, thank God for the opportunity. Um, but yeah, Nanaya taught me all of the elements of gospel that I know today. Mm-hmm just came from the Nile. He's told me to listen to Marvin Sapp, like I said. Um, that's how I became to love Kevin Bond, Aaron Lindsay, going down the list of other keyboardists, Derek mm-hmm. Jackson, Glenn Gibson okay. Jr. Yeah, and let's even get into that. So mm-hmm. what kind of 
what who are your like main keyboardists who do you listen to yeah why? so why and even the act of listening like mm-hmm. why why do you listen to other keyboardists okay so okay. yeah let's take it that way why why uh and who yeah why and who okay so first things first why why so the why as to why I listen to other keyboardists goes back to what I said voice sync every keyboardist has a different voicing or a different sound that they play sometimes i can listen to a track that i don't know but if i know if i can hear what the keyboardist is playing i instantly i probably even know the keyboardist i'm like i'm hearing slurs it could be kevin bond i'm hearing this it can be air lindsay so sometimes I if I, that because you really right yeah because i listen i can listen to something and i know oh no this is always playing <laughs> this guy don't listen to this guy is really All good right. don't listen to this guy but yeah no what he's saying is very true <laughs> not about me but about other keyboardists yeah mm-hmm. so and that's the reason why i listen to other keyboardists because sometimes i want to learn how to um maybe change keys within a song mm. um maybe in the best way possible so say i'm like okay i want to listen to Aaron Lindsay cuz Aaron Lindsay has a very influenced um jazz background okay uh, yes. so he knows yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he knows mm-hmm. how to change keys or sometimes I'm playing hymns and I'm like all right let me listen to Richard Smallwood. Richard yeah. Smallwood is a very yeah hardcore classical musician. Yeah. So many of his songs have certain elements of classical and hymns and mm-hmm. just you know you already yeah. know what it is the yeah. the wooden pianos you get me. <laughs> so that and then say sometimes maybe I want to listen to African phrases. I listen to some Joe Metz or people in Ghana in whether it's J Loops mm-hmm. uh Hakeem um Patrick Cordson mm-hmm. um hey tell us that Charles but yeah Hake? sorry Charlie Keys Charles Charles Charl Hake that's that's like Charles Hake Charles Hake I don't know Charles Hake Okay, you uh, that's we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that right? we'll get to that yeah Charlie Keys the guys all those guys mm-hmm. I listen to them and and try my best through Joe Metal or mm-hmm. Luigi McLean and yeah. Sunny Badu all these people yeah. like all have an influence place that that where I'm coming from as well. Okay. So yeah, so it, it comes from a place of what I'm lacking. So that's the reason mm. why I listen to other keyboardists. Maybe okay. in church they'll be singing a song I realize I can't play it the way that they would want to like yeah. they could play it. So I'm like, "All right, let me start listening to other songs." Um and listening to songs, I'm not going to lie. that's how you practice as well. Mm. If you spend hours listening to songs as a musician, oh man. Mm. You're so listening is a type of practice. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Listening to a lot of songs is okay. listening to songs and listening to songs that you just I, everything. I think that's mm-hmm. the, that's the other thing. Be inclined mm-hmm. to listen to whatever it is, whether it's praise or worship, mm-hmm. whether it's CCM, like I said, whether it's mm-hmm. gospel, every all, all types of music, even if it's in another language. Mm-hmm. Listen to all yeah. types of music. So what I'm hearing is that um listening to you listen to other keyboardists to fill in the gaps where you are lacking as a keyboardist. Yes, yes as a keyboardist exactly. And um and and to learn the way they would do what yep. they're good at. Yes, right? exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. and it's also a type of practice that that's what you're saying uh, yes. even outside of actually touching keys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you listen to Aaron Lindsay, yeah. Smallwood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That's, yeah. Wow. Anything else? Uh with what with people I listen to. Oh yeah, or oh, do you have anything else to say about uh Oof. Uh just okay, so my biggest influence everyone knows me for this. Mm-hmm. I just I love listening to Marvin Sapp. So mm-hmm. the early days Kevin Bond mm-hmm. behind the keys that yeah. on an old Kurzweil keyboard oh, and the release is said to what like maybe in negative 11. Some of you mm-hmm. may not know what I'm talking about but you'll get there. Yeah. Um Kevin Bond is one of the in my opinion one of the cleanest gospel musicians I've ever heard. Yeah. Some of the arpeggios I hear from this guy I mind confused. Yeah, mind blowing. You got me. He hey, man, this guy he knows exactly what I'm talking about cuz he's, yeah. he's 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 a son of him. So, you know, he knows. Kevin yeah. Bond. Kevin mm-hmm. Bond. Yeah. So, Kevin Bond is he's up there for me. That's all I have to say about many of the, okay. the influences yeah, people. And so what about you? What what is your what does your practice schedule look like? As of right now. Yeah. As of well, right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as of right now. So, you as already of, told us how it was um back then. It was yeah. constant and um yep. and repetitive. Mm-hmm. Is that the same now? 
as of right now, it's not it's not as constant as it was back then. But I can definitely say after some time with keys, you seem to because as of right now, you're getting used to what it's like to play keys. After some time, once you get used to it, after a couple of years, you start to d- develop an e. You start to not just practice music in terms of just your fingers, but your ears. I have a friend who's almost even perfect pitch. He's been playing way longer than I have, but it's because of all the songs he's listened to, all the things that he's tried to experiment with, you know what I mean, within church. Uh, so the best way to practice even for me right now is listening, like I said before, but not just even listening to songs, even say it's a message a mm-hmm. podcast and say it's Andrew or Pastor De- the Reverend Danny okay. and he's so playing for something. those who don't know <laughs> there are so we belong to the same church and yeah. in uh, the one that is based in Ghana the keyboard is the main keyboard is for the pastor is called Reverend Danny um, for the first Lord church in the UK the main keyboard is called Andrew and both of them are really wild keyboards yeah mm-hmm. yeah 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 Mm-hmm. But it's been awesome um, with the learning in, ter- in terms of learning keys. Yeah. So um, I, I like I like that. Um, one thing that I'm learning is even like practicing is not only done with your fingers; it's also done with your ears, right? And you're saying that it's very very important to be listening to music. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. But yes. It, but in terms of things uh, directly that I practice now, just mm-hmm. direct. Um, on YouTube, I just, I learned through YouTube now. I think that's the biggest thing. I, I, I follow a lot of channels. Um, um, but if I like something, um, while listening to it, I like some sort of video, uh, whether I search up how to play this song, how to play this song, um, and I get the tutorial and I like it, I just, yeah, actually like it on YouTube and then come back to it and learn it later. You get me? So for many of the videos that I've seen from Echo, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bro. What me? Yeah. What me? Yeah. What do yeah. I have to offer you? Oh, please, 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 please. Don't <laughs> bring yourself. We know you. We know you. But seriously, seriously, it's a, it's a really good habit as well. YouTube videos mm-hmm. they also okay. huge help. Okay. So in I wrote some notes from uh, this because this is a gold mine of information. What I'm basically learning from Oris, who's a really good keyboardist. Uh, is that in the beginning you have to practice 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 right um you become confident on the keys through consistency yeah it's not that's uh, very true it's not a one-off thing it's not watching my video uh, which which i'll be putting out every single friday it's not watching that once and and then that's your practice for the day or I mean for the week. It's it's a daily thing. It's a daily grind. It's a it's something that should be on your mind and something that should be on your heart if um you want to get better. Um I also learned that you have to get a mentor. You have to get someone that you are following, right? Whether it doesn't even the person doesn't have to be a physic like near you physically, because um as Ori said, he's been learning from Kevin Bond who I don't know who, who, who whether we'll ever meet. Um, he's been learning from Aaron Lindsay. He's been learning yeah. from uh, Richard Smallwood, right? Um, but he also had people um, who were physically close to him. He had um, yeah. Anna from Ghana. He had uh, the pastors that you mentioned. And so yep. get a mentor. Get someone who um, can help you or who, who you can follow, who you can learn from. Mm-hmm physically um and also wait and look for opportunities to play your yep. church i've mentioned this in one of my videos before that you should um you should aim to play in church you should aim all the things that you're learning are not for uh, i'm not teaching you these things to uh to use them anywhere else but in the church the church i'll yeah. not mention any other places but yeah and look for opportunities to play in church. Um, yes. After church, whoever is playing, ask them to teach you what you heard that was nice. Um, yeah. And lastly, one of the main things I got is that you should listen to a lot of music. Listen to a lot of music. You should have playlists for the different keyboardists 
that you um, are listening to. So a playlist for Kevin Bond. So maybe he played. He, he didn't only play for Marvin Sapp. Who else has he played for? Do you know? Uh, he's also played for um, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Okay. Um, mm. He's also played for, I, I believe, Judith Christie McAllister. McAllister. Okay. Yeah. Then, um, yeah. Yeah. And then, so then, if you your Kevin Bond playlist would include songs from all of those artists, your Aaron Lindsay playlist would include songs from all the different singers he has played behind. You see, yeah. and just listen to those you just soak those and unconsciously you begin to think yep yep the way they play yep. right? and that is the importance of listening to a lot yep. of music you you yep. just get ideas and inspiration that you wouldn't get from sitting around and uh, and like figuring things out for yourself on the keyboard Mark. the quickest the quickest way to learn is by phone yep. right because there's to get to where you want to be musically, mm-hmm. there is usually someone who's already there. And so the easiest way is to just follow the same path that he um, walked, right? It's or, it's a path that's already been walked on. And so it's actually a biblical principle in Hebrews yep. chapter 6. Verse Preach it. It says that um, follow those through who faith and patience have inherited the promise. Yes. So there are people who are where you want to be. Yep. If you want to get there, follow them. But remember, it takes faith. You need to believe yep. that you can do it, and it takes patience. But this guy who I'm talking to isn't, he didn't just get to where he is by sitting down, right? There was work, there was faith, there was patience. Um. So thank you very much, Oris. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you for the, thank you for the opportunity, Eva. Mm-hmm. Oris will definitely have some guest, uh, guest tutorial so look out for that in the year to come any last anything else you want to say before we go first i don't have anything oh maybe, okay if i have one more thing mm-hmm. uh definitely don't be afraid don't be okay. afraid at all don't be afraid of any embarrassment or anything mm-hmm. and don't give up that's mm-hmm. all i have to say all right. yeah don't be afraid yeah i agree with that um don't be afraid there is every every next challenge every next level even outside of music is behind that wall of fear yep. and you have to Come jump on. over yeah. that wall of fear to see yep. that um, to see that mm-hmm. so thank you very much Oris yep. we'll be thank in you. talks um, because I need to become better and you have what I need to become better so <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you. This has been Minstrel's Heart Music, um, an exclusive interview with the best keyboardist in First Love, North America. We're trying, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs>